Uh, we'll get the show on the road, and we will start with Monsignor Mike to come up and give the invocation. So if we could uh, bow our heads and first pray that uh, we'll be, uh, avoid a severe flood. All that God has created and sustains, all the events he guides, and all the human works that are good and have a good purpose, prompt those who believe to praise and bless the Lord with hearts and voices. God is the source and origin of every blessing. May the citizens of East Grand Forks, the city leadership, the city employees, the business leaders gathered here today proclaim our belief that all things work together for the good of those who respect and love God. We are sure that in all things we must seek the help of God and so we ask God for his blessing. Almighty and ever-living God, you made us stewards over the created world so that in all things we may honor the demands of charity. Graciously hear our prayers that you, that you bless, your blessing may come upon us and those who serve and work for the good of East Grand Forks. Let them always see you as the good surpassing every good and love their neighbor with upright hearts. We ask this through our loving and generous God. And we ask God's blessing upon our food. Amen. Join their meal. Uh, would we all please stand for the presentation of the colors, please? Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you very much to those Sacred Heart students. Let's give them another round of applause. You know, I have the pleasure of doing the intro to uh, Mayor Steve Gander. Before I do any of that, I noticed in his bio that he enjoys singing. 
So maybe in the future, we can have good old Mayor Gander up here to sing the national anthem. No? Yes? No? Yeah. Maybe he can do it in conjunction with the Sacred Heart students. That's a good idea. Well, anyway, anyway thank you, everybody. Uh, if you're still eating, please continue eating. Um, actually, to your benefit, the lights are really bright, so Mayor Gander won't be able to see you uh, not listening anyway. Uh, no, but anyway, wel welcome everybody to the seventh annual East Grand Forks State of the City. Uh, the chamber is proud to, to host this in conjunction with the, in cooperation with the fine sponsors that we have. Uh, the chamber is also proud to partner with the city of East Grand Forks um, on numerous initiatives. You know, it's, it's pretty rare uh, for a chamber to represent uh, a greater area that encompasses two different cities, two different city councils, two different mayors, and two different counties, and two different states. So. Uh, in, in working alongside East Grand Forks to uh, whether it be recreational opportunities to uh, the ongoing bridge discussions, uh, the Chamber is proud to, to uh, partner with the City of East Grand Forks. I want to give a quick shout out and thank you to some of the sponsors. Um, the corporate level sponsors, and they're all on your, on your table as well, uh, would be Alaris Financial, All True Health System, American Federal Bank, City of Grand Forks, Construction Engineers, CPS Engineering, Franzen Bank and Trust, Grand Forks Herald, Houston Engineering, Northland Community and Technical College, RJ Zavril and Sons, Sanford Health, Stratacorp, University of North Dakota, Valandry, Visit Greater, Greater Grand Forks, Widseth, and the business level sponsors are AE2S, Bremer Bank, First Community Credit Union, Gallstead Jensen and McCain, Grand Lifestyle Magazine, Northdale Oil, Northland Custom Woodworking, Ultima Bank, University of Minnesota Crookston, and XL Energy. Let's give it a round of applause for the sponsors. <clears throat> and now why we're here is not to listen to myself, but to listen to Mayor Gander. And it's uh, my pleasure to introduce uh, Mayor Steve Gander. Uh, Mayor Steve Gander is a native of East Grand Forks, Minnesota. He attended school in East Grand Forks, uh, the University of North Dakota, uh, and then went on to Illinois College of Optometry in Chicago, where he graduated magna cum laude in 1987. After graduation from optometry school, Steve joined OptiCare Forks Vision Clinic, where he practices with Dr. Sorhog and Dr. Coles, and then the whole team there, including which I found out with his wife, Roz. Uh, Dr. Gander's hobbies include running marathons, camping, hiking, snowmobiling, fishing, hunting, and singing. Uh, he and his wife Roz were married in 1990. Uh, they have two grown sons, Thomas with his wife Bailey and Jonathan, and they are blessed with uh, two wonderful grandchildren. So let's give a, a warm welcome here to uh, Mayor Steve Gander. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Crary. Thanks, Monsignor Foltz, for the invocation. Thanks, Quartet from Sacred Heart High School for singing our national anthem. Thanks, Barry and Kim, for all you do to make this thing happen. Thanks, Megan. I said Megan. Keith, Corey, Reed, and all our city crews for making this happen also. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Livewire, for all that you've put into this. All the setup, you'll tear down all the live production, everything that you're doing and everything that you're doing to make it happen. Thanks, Council President Mark Olstead, for being a good teammate and a good partner in pretty much everything we do. You are all in, and man, we appreciate it. Thanks, Roz, for all you put up with for me every day. And thanks to anyone I may have forgotten. Um, as we think about our brand, the City of East Grand Forks, we operate under the brand Life Connected. Now, what really is Life Connected? What's it all about? And what really are the vital linkages that we have? If we're connected, like, who are we connected to? What does that even mean? And so we'll talk about that. We'll think about that a little bit. But we do know that it takes a lot of linkages to make things run smoothly and for us to get our work done. You can't be an island. You can't try to do it yourself. You have to have a lot of these great connections. You know, a lot of our connections to make the city run are internal within City Hall. And a lot of them are external to a lot of the people that are gathered right here today. And uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about that also. Um, each of these entities that we talk about answered two questions for me. Number one, the first question was, what is your greatest accomplishment from the last year? And I did ask for only one because we have a lot of different groups and individuals and entities. Second of all, what's your top goal or objective for the coming year? 
and you'll see a lot of people sort of struggled with those two very fundamental questions. Come on. Um, but first of all, then with our city council. Council President Olstead, once again, thank you. Vice President Riopel, thank you. Council Members Vetter, Helms, Larson, Peterson, and Pakshavinsky, thank you for your service and also for the privilege of serving alongside each and every one of you. Another of our necessary linkages internally go to our boards and commissions. Our boards include our Civil Service Board, Economic Development Authority Board, Library Board, Metropolitan Planning Organization, Senior Citizens Board. On the commissions, we have the Cemetery Commission, Park and Recreation Commission, Planning Commission, Water and Light Commission, Charter Commission. Many of you are here today. Thank you for your service. Again, when I consider all that you put in in serving the community through these boards and commissions, I'm sure you know, because you see the product of your work, it's essential. It's absolutely essential. So thank you. Our city runs through our department heads. We put a great deal of trust in these people, and they have shown that they deserve it. First, I want to talk about our police department, Chief Mike Hedlund. The East Grand Forks Police Department uses a comprehensive approach to drug enforcement, and it's part of the Pine to Prairie Drug Task Force that covers eight counties in northwestern Minnesota. Officers work together, and they gather drug-related intelligence, conduct, conduct surveillance, and they respond to calls for service, even as they're addressing traffic enforcement. Fentanyl-laced pills have become a major issue as they look like legitimate medication or even candy. But they are extremely dangerous and they killed over 70,000 people in 2021 alone. The EGFPD is dedicated and fighting every day to keep these drugs out of our community. Their goal for the coming year is to increase positive interaction with our community members and continue to work to make East Grand Forks a safe place to work and live. Most of you are aware that we recently conducted a climate study to look at the atmosphere inside of our police department. What it revealed is that the vast majority of those who responded felt that the police department is moving in a positive direction and that the chief is doing a great job. We identified a few areas to improve on and we will dedicate the coming months to getting those things taken care of. Fire department. And once again, I asked the chief, what's your greatest accomplishment? And he said, you ask an easy question. Our greatest accomplishments are we provide excellent service to our community and we sent everyone home safely at the end of every shift. Those are two really good, good accomplishments. In 2022, they made significant progress in career development and training with near record numbers of training hours logged. They also had new full-time paid on call firefighters complete their 100 hour initial training and achieved a record number of state certifications including firefighter one, fire instructor, and fire apparatus operators certifications, and that is the first in the history of the East Grand Forks Fire Department. Their goal for this year is to maintain their mission by continuously training to provide well-trained responders who serve our community. In emergency management, because our fire chief is also an emergency, ma emergency management professional, um, they conducted their first emergency operations center training this is a, was a two-day class that 24 of our city staff went to, and they learned to operate Emergency Operations Center. This training was essential in preparing our city for large-scale emergencies and disasters. Our goal in emergency management is to continue the training that we've started. I have had opportunity on multiple occasions to spend time with our firefighters. Their teamwork and their professionalism give me total confidence in their ability to serve and protect our people. Public Works. Director Jason Stordahl. Public Works' biggest accomplishment for 2022 was fighting the flood last spring with limited time to prepare after the heavy rains. As I recall, the crest prediction jumped 10 feet in about a 12-hour period a couple days before the crest. And they didn't hiccup, they didn't miss a beat, they just went for it along with our other crews. Water and Light was right there. Park and Rec was right there. Everybody pulled together. Uh, police, fire, it was, it was a really amazing uh, mobilization with a, with a really short notice. And, and it's, it's all the city staff really that, that help in these big disasters. 
The biggest challenge or goal for 2023 is to operate and maintain public infrastructure as safely and cost effectively as possible. Anyone who knows Jason knows he's a man of few words, but when he starts and, and when he does speak, it's worthwhile to listen. Most of us have learned in this life that we can either be haphazard and frantic or we can be systematic and keep cool. I will say our public works department is systematic and cool. Engineering. We have Steve Emery from Widseth. Um, according to Steve, I think the greatest engineering accomplishment in 2022, this makes me chuckle, was working with city staff and the city council to select a project for the city's federal sub-target funds and avoiding the risk of the city losing these funds. He's biting his tongue every one of these words. Selection of an urban reconditioning project in lieu of a complete reconstruction project allows us to maintain and make repairs on our current roadway system and stretch the funds being received to more than one roadway system. Pretty sure that we elected officials sometimes frustrate our staff. Pretty sure that's how that goes. The project on Fifth Avenue Northeast and Southeast will include concrete panel replacement, curb and gutter repairs, and some minor ADA improvements. The timely maintenance of this roadway system is crucial not only for residential and commercial properties, but also for trans systems and the agricultural community's usage, which rely on this important street to access American Crystal Sugar. The project on Demers Avenue will include concrete panel replacement, curb and gutter repairs, and replacement of the asphalt patches where the old railroad tracks went in, kind of by the old Burger King building there where it's getting to be quite a bump as you go over it. That'll be all fresh new concrete laid in there, all leveled out. Really will enhance the driving experience through there. Um, additional improvements will include upgrading curb ramps to current ADA standards, replacement of failed crosswalks, and much needed sidewalk improvements in front of City Hall, which will be completed in close coordination with the EGF water and light staff to complete electrical upgrades and repair street lights, which have been pushed out by the frost. Next year's goals include improving pedestrian safety and enhancing recreational opportunities. We will install a Hawk pedestrian crossing system at 13th Street Southeast for children walking and biking to school. The Lafave Park project will include a new boat launch and mill and overlay of 1st Street Southeast. will include a picnic shelter, improved parking, and a new kayak launching area. This project will also include improved fishing access to the Red Lake Red Lake River confluence and aesthetic improvements. These improvements will enhance the natural beauty of our area and improve safety on our roads. On to the Water and Light Department. Keith Mickelseth, General Manager. In March 2022, East Grand Force Water and Light Department employee Jeff Holbeck attended the Minnesota Rural Water Association Conference in St. Cloud. East Grand Force was chosen for having the best tasting drinking water in the entire state at this event. This qualified East Grand Force to go on and represent Minnesota at the national competition in Washington, D.C. What a great accomplishment for all of our water and, uh, I should say, water treatment employees. The East Grand Force Water and Light Department provides reliable and cost-effective energy through various programs, rebate programs, and the off-peak load control program. The department can shed up to 4.1 megawatts of power using this load management system, reducing our wholesale energy costs for customers who will enroll in the program. Staff members are in, available to install or update your load control receivers at no cost to you. The Water and Light Department plans to complete the installation of these load control receivers by the end of 2023, so please, any interested customers, please give them a call before the end of the year. The sooner the better. The technology in water and power distribution is phenomenal. I shared recently how the replacement of a water meter at our place of business saved water. It was a 20 gallon per hour wastage inside of our water, electric, excuse me, plumbing fixtures. Once that was corrected, it saved us about $100 a month. So what can you do with $1,200 a year just from letting them in to change out your water meter? Pretty cool. Campbell Library with our director, Charlotte Helgeson. Her top accomplishment for this past year, the library went fully live again in 2022, including story times, music and movement, 3D presentations, anime and Lego clubs, pop-up library, and many more activities alongside our amazing volunteers. And her goal for the coming year is, our library is taking on a new look 
with the collection being reorganized into a bookstore layout in 2023 that includes the Library of Things, new young adult and junior nonfiction. I appreciate that our library is so much more than racks of books. Nothing against racks of books, but they really, really come to life with the programs and other services that you provide. Thank you to all of our library staff and all the volunteers. They're a heavily volunteer-driven organization. Thank you. Parks and Recreation, Superintendent Reed Huttonen. The Parks and Rec Department of East Grand Forks successfully hosted and supported over 20 sports tournaments and community events in the past year, including state and regional youth hockey tournaments, figure skating ice show, fishing and pickleball tournaments, parades, music concerts, and more. In addition, the Sherlock Park swimming pool had over 19,000 visitors, and the Red River State Recreation Area sold nearly 9,000 camping reservations. According to a survey, more than 9,000 people visited East Grand Forks for winter ice sports, contributing 2.1 million directly into our economy. The Parks and Rec Department also supported Rockin' Up North Fest, Heritage Days, multiple 5K runs and Greenway events, and the Potato Bowl and Homecoming Parades. The department is proud of its seasonal employees, volunteers, participants, and fans for showcasing the community and promoting healthy activity. We are still working on our improvements for our baseball facilities and ice arena, which you've been hearing so much about the last couple of years. There is not too much to report at this time, other than the fact that the legislator is revising how it deals with all projects like this, and so the process has kind of come to a stop until the legislature decides how they want to proceed. Planning and Zoning, Building Official, Nancy Ellis. We aim to serve our customers efficiently and professionally through our various services, including planning, building inspections, transit, transportation, planning, facility management, nuisance, and ADA compliance. Our recent accomplishments include improved online forms and permitting processes, purchasing a new transit bus for 2024, ongoing assistance with lot development, and annual bike ped improvements to meet compliance with our ADA transition plan. Next year, we hope to continue this work and we'll be reviewing how effective our department is at providing help and assistance to our residents. We will also be implementing more cost-saving measures in the operation of our city-owned buildings. Lastly, East Grand Forks Transit will partner with Cities Area Transit and the MPO to complete a study on how to implement microtransit within the cities of Grand Forks and East Grand Forks. Never even heard of microtransit. I just can't wait to see what that's all about. It's going to be so exciting. Nancy, you wear a lot of hats. Thank you for all that you do. Next department is finance. Our finance director is Carla Anderson. The City of East Grand Forks received the Government Finance Officers Association Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting for its 2021 Annual Comprehensive Financial Report. This is the 29th year that the city has received this prestigious award. To receive this award, the city must publish an easily readable and efficiently organized annual comprehensive financial report. This report satisfies both accounting principles generally accepted in the United States of America and applicable legal requirements. A certificate of achievement is val valid for one year. We will be submitting the 2022 report to GFOA to determine its eligibility for another certificate. We believe that our 2022 report will conform to the Certificate of Achievement Program's requirements. Carla, thanks for keeping our financial house in order. Next department, Economic Development Authority Director Paul Gordy. The EDA has focused on workforce issues this past year. The EDA is aware that a shortage of childcare facilities is a hurdle to parents being able to work. The EDA has brought in the Rural Child Care Innovation Program, RCCIP, through the support of First Children's Finance, FCF, under a grant and with programming from them, the EDA led a local effort to appreciate and grow child care services in our region. So far we have five new child care facilities that have come online through this effort and two more that are in the planning stages. When all these are online, we will have an additional 165 child care spaces available taking us closer to being able to meet the unmet need in our area. The EDA has worked to promote the state Main Street Economic Revitalization Program 
administered by the Northwest Minnesota Foundation. Under this program, local businesses may receive a grant totaling up to 30% of their qualifying costs to renovate and improve their businesses. In the coming year, the EDA anticipates working closely with businesses as they navigate these inflationary times. The EDA provides gap financing for the necessary improvements for businesses, even dovetailing into the funding provided by the state Main Street Economic Revitalization Program. The EDA will also bring together local entrepreneurs with representatives from the Small Business Development Center, SBDC, and SCORE in collaboration with the state launch Minnesota Initiative to provide free services to them for the development of business plans and startups. Back to our theme of life connected. We really do need to consider every member of our city staff as part of our internal vital linkages. Call on Council President Mark Olstead, who would like to recognize some of our staff members. Welcome. Um, earlier we did a walkthrough. I asked if I could have my own walk-up music, but I guess that didn't make it. And then, so, um, I'm going to go through and highlight employees at the City of East Grand Forks. Um, I think one of the most wonderful things about living in the city and what we have here for employees who take care of and take pride in what they do here. Um, First one I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna go over the East Grand Forks Fire Department, had Chief uh, Bushy give me some information. And this is from his perspective. Uh, in 2022, we were shorthanded for 11 months due to a retirement, resignation, sick leave because of the shortage and extended high water event and extended river search, both are full-time paid and on-call firefighters were asked to cover more shifts than ever before. Our firefighters also responded to an increasing number of emergency calls, logged nearly a record number of hours of training, received a record number of state certifications, and exceeded attendance requirements, all while maintaining high quality of service. And when I look back at the one thing that stands out is the performance of our firefighters. In 2022, our firefighters showed their value to the community with their dedication, commitment, selflessness, and <clears throat> serving each other in our community. I am extremely proud of each of our firefighters that exceeded expectations. It is our honor to be there. It is his honor to be the fire chief. I'll move on to Julie Dubuque, who has worked for the library for over 40 years, which is amazing. She has covered, labeled, and applied security to every item in the library. No one is more quick or precise as Julie. Julie takes care of her petty cash and keeps a close eye on all filing. She also does a much loved annual exhibit of her penguin collection that her patrons greatly enjoy. So if you haven't seen that, make sure you take, take that in. And I'll move on to Verona, Veronica Kostruski. Hopefully I got that correct. Um, I have been, Veronica has been working for the Water and Light Department since 1980. My original position was a clerk typist, and now I have the support technician position. The first years of work were done with typewriter, pen, and paper. As years changed, computers became routine for us. Areas of work included for her are electronic, electric load management, three implementations of the systems to create stable electric distribution by shedding electric loads to avoid rolling brownouts or blackouts. The SCADA system tell me telemetry monitoring of electric distribution, process large commercial and industrial electric meter data for billing, maintain inventory for waste and electric distribution, billing for distribution repairs and fees. She does compile, coordinate, and databases for electric water capital projects. Even though times have changed since 1980, one thing has stayed the same. The main objective is to provide the best service to the East Grand Forks residents. I'm going to move on to Corporal Ryan Douglas next. The East Grand Forks Police Department has selected Corporal Douglas as the employee to highlight this year at State of the City event. Corporal Douglas grew up in Moorhead and graduated from Moorhead High School. He completed his law enforcement training at Alexander Community Technical College. Corporal Douglas worked at the Clay County Correction Facility and Lawrence, Kansas Police Department before joining the East Grand Forks Police Department. 
Corporal Douglas was promoted to the rank of corporal in May of 2019. Corporal Douglas has taken on numerous extra roles during his time with East Grand Forks Police Department. These include serving as one of the department's field training officers, where Corporal does calm and patient demeanor, helps to make him very effective as he works with the new officers. Corporal Douglas serves as a law enforcement instructor for the police department in the following areas. ABLE, which is active bystandership for law enforcement. Firearms and the department's VITRA training system. Corporal Douglas is a member of the Grand Forks Regional SWAT team. He also serves as one of the mentors who work with local police explorers program. Corporal Douglas is married and has two children. Next, I'll move on to Josh Lee. Josh Lee is a stormwater wastewater operator in the city's public works department. Josh has worked for the public works for six years. Prior to working for the city, he worked for a survey and map developer. Josh felt from day one when he was here, having a GIS system would be beneficial for this department. He researched GIS software developers and identified one that would work for us. The company is called Diamond Maps. They're a small company that started with one employee. Their software was inexpensive, and Josh asked for approval for the purchase of this software, which was granted. Utilizing the previous experience and acknowledged and developed, he continues to develop our GIS database. The GIS tool can be used not only by public work staff, but by multiple departments throughout the city. It can be used to track permits, loca locate utilities, store information on stormwater permits, work orders, street repairs, and much, much more. The tool has been a great, great asset for the department and has saved us time, money, and created a safer work environment. So thank you. Move on to Brenda Alt. There's a couple hats that Brenda it wears, and I'll read them off here. She's one, a permit technician. Issue all building, plumbing, mechanical, right away permits for the city of East Grand Forks. Record and file a report and audits monthly, quarterly, and yearly all issued permits. Assisting citizens on questions regarding what requires a permit, what is required for their permit application, and to be complete scheduling of any inspections. She's also executive assistant for the city planner. Assist planner for his needed attend all meetings, record and transcribe minutes, code bills for payment, city hall, sunshine terrace, infill building, order supplies for city hall also. She's also executive assistant for the EDA director. So record and maintain payments in all MIF loans, COVID loans, down payment assistant loans, and rent for the city buildings. Maintain all records for the new home programs, keeping track of the 5,000 program. I've been satisfied in issuing those documents to the homeowners, sending that paperwork to the county to record, and satisfy when everything is complete. Keeping track of the $500 landscaping program and when the payout is in full for the new homeowner. Maintain all records for the two-year tax abatement program, keeping records on who has closed on their new home, watching the home value, and working with the county when the home has reached full value, adding them to the list of the homes who qualify that year for the abatement program. Assist the EDA director as needed, attend all meetings and record and transcribe minutes. I'll move on to Brady Olson. Brady Olson, the Parks and Rec Department asked uh, Reed Hutton to put this together. Uh, the Parks and Rec Department has consists of nine full-time employees to direct, operate, and maintain a city parks system. Recreation programs and facilities, senior citizen center, and the resurrection cemetery. In addition to the full-time staff, the park, park and recreation department employees, as many as 100 part-time seasonal employees throughout the year, serving as youth sports coaches, lifeguards, ice operating arenas. Three seasonal employees serve as the backbone of our program and our recreational facilities. One such seasonal employee that repeatedly steps up to the plate and serves our department and residents of East Grand Forks is Brady Olson. Brady lives in East Grand Forks and works full-time as an elementary music teacher in Grand Forks Public Schools. He worked in Parks and Rec Department as a young student growing up in our community and returned as an arena operator in 2016 when his family moved back home to East Grand Forks. Returning each winter since he has grown into an invaluable member of our team Due to the retirements and resignations and the full-time park and recreation has been below full capacity since July of 2022. In this staff shortage, Brady 
has repeatedly answered the call, working an average of 20 to 25 hours a week to ensure ice arenas remain open and cared for at all hours. This past September, when our ice arenas were set to open and our department was still training new hires, Brady volunteered to take an additional shifts and support the training and orientation of the newest hires. When Gogor is asked to describe Brady, he is described as smart, skilled, compassionate, friendly, reliable, hardworking, and trustworthy. He always gives the Park and Recreation Department and the residents of East Grand Forks his best, and we all are better for being able to have him a teammate. Thank you. Continuing on the theme of Life Connected, now we're going to turn our attention to some of the external linkages that we have as a community and who is it that we're connected to and, and why and what are these people up to anyway. Um, first of all, we're going to think about Polk County. And uh, right away, the first thing I'd like to say about Polk County is thank you for your commitment to join in funding the bridge study that is so, so important for the south end of our community. The two bridges, you know, general location yet to be determined. We know that you're balancing this against other bridges throughout the county, replacing bridges that are failing. And so we do appreciate you some way, again, balancing this against the, the need for transportation in and out of the county in all different directions means a great deal to us that you're willing to join in and support the funding of this, this study that will take us to the next level. You know, there are those who have cried out for more information. We need more information. The old information is useless. We need the more information. So that's exactly what we're doing. Timely, complete, comprehensive information at a, at a level of detail beyond anything that we've gathered before so that we can move this bridge process to the next level. Thanks again, Polk County, for, for ponying up the dollars there. Um, so I did also ask the, the Polk County folks their, their top um, objectives for the next year, also their top um, successes of the past year, and here's what they shared. Um, there will be a new regional water system in Polk County bringing fresh water to East Township areas, funded in part by Polk County's $584,000 contribution from American Rescue Plan funds. Next item, state bonding funds are being sought for robotic technology in the Resource Recovery Center in Faustin due to the workforce shortages there. Polk County passed a moratorium on cannabis products and businesses pending their opportunity to craft an ordinance um, pertaining to this. Commissioner Jacobson passed away this past winter and so Polk County is planning for a special election to complete his term to find someone to replace him. The Sheriff's Department has added a new sergeant position and county emergency management is of course monitoring the flood situation, the water levels as the thaw continues. Next, we want to think about our connection to our Senator Mark Johnson. Senator Johnson thanks our city crews for keeping our streets clean through the heavy snow of this past winter. Senator Johnson happens to find the climate in St. Paul right now just a little bit chilly. As a Republican, with the legislature, the governor's office, and the constitutional offices all occupied by Democrats. He points out that this shift also does bring a shift to a bit more of a metro focus, which will create a bit more of a challenge for us in greater Minnesota. As Senate Minority Leader, Mark, though, is in the best position possible to carry out our concerns to the legislative process. Mark offers his thanks to all of you for your support through the years. Next, we have Representative Deb Keel. Representative Deb Keel has always been here for us when we've needed her, all through COVID, with COVID concerns, even to local street repair, a meeting we had not that long ago, all the way to authoring our bills in St. Paul. We wish her a speedy recovery from her setback, which she had recently a minor stroke, but I believe has already returned to work and is doing pretty well. Next, our linkage is to the city of Grand Forks. I enjoy the great relationship we have with our counterparts in Grand Forks. Sometimes the media only like to talk about the ways that we disagree and, and turn it into kind of a personal thing. Of course, that's not really the truth. We could sit down tomorrow with any one of those three hooligans pictured right there and have a very pleasant conversation. Productive, we could stay on issue or not, and for sure we wouldn't agree on everything. We'd butt heads on a few things, but we'd walk away, shake hands, and honestly, with a ton of respect and fondness for one another. 
that's really how the relationship is with all three of those individuals, and I, and I mean that sincerely. Good people they are. Um, and again, we see things a bit differently. We serve a slightly different subset of people, and that's inevitable that we will um, have a few disagreements. And that's actually a good thing. It improves the outcome when people actually honestly disagree a little bit. So they let me know, the, the folks in Grand Forks, that their top accomplishments in 2022 singular, I guess, was economic and development successes coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic to include signs of economic success, record sales and tax building value permits, downtown development investment boom highlighted by The Hive, Franklin on 4th, Beacon by Epic, and Olive Ann Boutique Hotel. Next, we have Grand Forks Air Force Base and Grand Sky Developments to include US DOD's Space Development Agency and Testing Resource Management Center. For 2023, their top goals are quality of life, feasibility plan implementation, community aquatics, court slash turf facilities, epitome energy development, downtown and former Grand Forks water treatment plant site redevelopment. Now we're on to Northland. Northland Community and Technical College, and this is compliments of President Sandy Cadu. Um, Northland Community Technical College has implemented a strategic plan They've faced enrollment and budget challenges and refocused on student success. They have built partnerships with workforce and employers and with K-12 education. For the coming year, Northland Community Technical College plans to explore new programs and improve the delivery of existing programs. They also plan to improve pathways from high school through college and on to careers. I've been asked to remind everyone that Friday the 28th of April from 1 to 4 p.m., they will be celebrating their 50th anniversary. Please join us as we celebrate 50 years of instruction at Northland's East Grand Forks campus. So that's Friday, April the 28th, 1 to 4 p.m. Shameless plug that was. So to Dr. Kadu and everyone at Northland, thank you for helping prepare our young people for excellent careers and for life. We're on to the University of North Dakota, President Andy Armacost. President Armacost shared two key points to make as highlights for the last year. One, design and launch of the new UND Leeds strategic plan, which emphasizes growth in UND, EGF, and Grand Forks. That stands for learning, equity, affinity, discovery, and service is the acronym for Leeds. And of course, the, the lettering is kind of small, so I wasn't sure you could see it. Okay. Thanks, Barry. I think I got something here for you later on. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, also, along with that, time to regroup. Uh, the second thing is the uh, continued transformation of the campus. If you haven't been on campus lately, you really need to visit. Those are the words of President Armacost. So the Memorial Union, now in its second full year of operation, they have the new Nistler College of Business and Public Administration, two new residence halls replaced aging halls, and they renovated a third. Public-private partnership to create Memorial Village. Construction is underway on the land where Memorial Stadium used to stand. The new building will include athletic offices on the first floor and apartments on the upper floors. And his third point, and he's got it all bolded here, we want to express our thanks for the many people in the East Grand Forks community who have contributed to these projects from tradespeople to designers to engineers. I feel like he's maybe talking to our own Brian Larson with that last one. Our council member Brian Larson um, helps a lot with these projects. Dr. Armacost, I sat next to a young man at the Grand Forks Air Force Base Christmas party this last year who knew you when you were Brigadier General in the Air Force. He mentioned how he knew you also when you were Dean of the Air Force Academy and how much he appreciated you back then. He said, UND is lucky to have you, and I'm inclined to agree. Now we're on to the Grand Forks Air Force Base. Commander Colonel Timothy Curry. Colonel Curry says, I can't choose just one accomplishment to highlight, so here are our top three. Number one, Agile Combat Employment, ACE, of the Global Hawk RQ-4 aircraft system demonstrates our ability to increase combat readiness, agility, and improved technical skills of our airmen throughout the wing. 
Over the last year, we have flown into and out of multiple global locations and conducted historic intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance combat operations. We're extremely proud of our airmen and their dedication to completing all missions required of the nation. Number two, comprehensive airman fitness, CAF, is vital to national security. We promoted CAF throughout our wing over the past year primarily because we lost airmen and dependents to death by suicide last winter. This year we have actively promoted and supported multiple monthly events focused on strengthening mental, physical, spiritual, and social pillars to ensure that all our airmen and dependents know they're valued, relevant, and treasured. If you have a chance, anytime you encounter one of these airmen anywhere up and down, um, please tell them how much you appreciate them. And if you happen to bump into spouses, significant others, same. It's a, it's a big deal. It, it can make all the difference. And number three, after 10 plus years without a local air show, we were able to host the, the Air Force Thunderbirds demonstration team at Grand Forks Air Force Base in June of 2022. During the Thunderbirds practice day, and despite weather the second day, the team was able to successfully demonstrate how grace meets power daily in the form of world-class airmen and U.S. technology. Our wing airmen made the two-day event successful and a once-in-a-lifetime experience for some of the local children in the region. And so for the next year, his goal is to spend a lot more time with his family. You've probably heard that he's retiring. Um, for the wing, he's confident that it, it's better prepared for the challenges ahead thanks to the hard work and dedication of our airmen. From the first time that I ever met Colonel Curry and had breakfast with him, I had the sense that he's a man of high integrity. I remember thinking that I would be proud to serve under him or have one of my <clears throat> sons serve under him, under his command. So we wish him well as he transitions to civilian life. Something tells me he'll be just fine. Next, our linkage to the ISD 595 East Grand Forks Public Schools. This is from Mike Colness, Steph Larson, and Brian Lohr. East Grand Forks Senior High has a comprehensive program called the Wave, Ac Wave Academy that helps prepare students for the world of work. Freshmen are introduced to various insights in a similar class that covers A to Z topics related to work. Students are taken on tours of different businesses throughout the school year and volunteer at the local food bank in East Grand Forks. In fact, East Grand Forks freshmen have packed 100,000 pounds of food for low-income elderly, elderly residents in this area. As sophomores, all students pick an academy that they want to explore further. Currently, there are three academies from which to choose. HHS, Health and Human Services, BEC, Business, Entrepreneurship, and Communication, and STEAM, Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. Each academy's students take industry-specific tours to get more in-depth knowledge about the work they want to pursue in the future. Now, juniors, they actually participate in a job shadow program to get hands-on experience in the field they're interested in. Students are placed in local businesses such as Sanford, local eateries, and other businesses throughout the school year to become familiar with their passion. Next year, seniors will participate in an internship program, which may be paid or unpaid, depending on the business's needs. The school also has a, added a CNA class that allows students to become CNA certified. In addition, students are certified in first aid CPR and AED through the HHS program. Mr. Kosowski, I've heard a lot of good things about Mr. Kosowski. The HHS instructor is a certified trainer who's more than willing to help. The school invites numerous guest speakers to come into classrooms to explain what they can do in their careers. Finally, all the students go through a mock interview process to prepare them for the real thing. While it may be nerve-wracking for the students, the school considers this an essential task to help them prepare for the workforce. So congratulations to the success of the WAVE Academy. It's a great preparation for careers for these students, and it absolutely has a positive effect on businesses that they're involved with as well. Next we have Sacred Heart School, Carl Adolfson, President. We're thankful and blessed to continue growing the enrollment at Sacred Heart School. We have more than, we have 177 more students than we had 10 years ago. We're proud now to offer 27 different sports and activities for our students. All these opportunities, a record of academic excellence, and the opportunity to pray and incorporate faith into our day are what makes the Sacred Heart 
experience unique. Our most recent school accomplishment was making it back to state in boys basketball for the second year in a row. Both boys basketball and baseball participated in the Minnesota State Tournament last year. As we continue to grow, one of our goals for next year is to expand our elective course offerings for our high school students and to ensure elementary students have a physical education class every day. Continuing to improve our teacher salaries also is a focus. We appreciate all the support from the community and are honored to fill a niche in our community for families looking for a Catholic, Christian, and small school environment. We will continue to be a place here in East Grand Forks where children are able to shine. Riverside Christian School, Principal Cindy waned. Riverside has realized great growth over the last five years. One of the attractions of new students has been the addition of our high school. This year, a great accomplishment has been the admittance into the Minnesota State High School League. This membership has allowed us to offer our students access to activities we would be unable to provide before and has given us opportunity to co-op with area schools. One of those is Sacred Heart. Our, one of our most significant goals for the upcoming year is to rightly manage our growth while maintaining our commitment to our mission. Riverside Christian School exists to provide a Bible-based education centered on Christ, equipping students for a lifetime of learning, leadership, service, and worship. Next group, the Chamber of Commerce, the Chamber of Grand Forks, East Grand Forks, Barry and Kimberly. Our chamber achieved the highest five-star designation among just 131 of 7,000 chambers in the U.S. Our membership and finances are at historic highs, and events such as the business after hours are sold out two years in advance. Chamber leadership has a waiting list for 2024. Our Golden Eagle and military affairs programs provide over $30,000 annually to support the Grand Forks Air Force Base and National Guard. The chamber helped secure two new missions for Grand Forks Air Force Base and Grand Sky, the Space Development Agency and Test Resource Management. The chamber coordinates the Team Grand Forks Legislative Partnership essential for securing state and federal funds to our region's economy, which relies on government for 28% of its revenue. Next we have what I used to call the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, but now they are the Visit Greater Grand Forks. And the, the principal individuals there that I've dealt with are Julie Rigg and Stephanie Bernstrom. Last year, Visit Grand Forks awarded over $175,000 in event funding to 78 events with direct economic benefit to our region of 15.9 million. That is a ton of money. Along with that, they awarded over 45,000 in additional funds through the Greater Grand Forks Enticement Program. Visit Greater Grand Forks also has several in-kind and complimentary services that they provide. The overarching goal of Visit Greater Grand Forks is to attract more visitors to our region. They do this in various ways often in partnership with other agencies and organizations. Reed Hutton and I have worked with them to bring the governor's fishing opener up here to Minnesota, up here to East Grand Forks. And um, we've met multiple times for this. We felt like we were getting close, and that's when COVID hit and things kind of went into a bit of a tailspin. They did reach out to us, uh, Minnesota Tourism, and wondered if we were still interested, and of course we are. Um, but we just had to kind of pull back just a wee bit, and now we'll kind of reconstitute that and see if we can get that going. So keep your ear to the rail. I think probably we will have the governor's fishing opener up here one of these springs. Julie and Stephanie, we look forward to working with you on the fishing opener and, and any other projects. Um, these two really do make it fun. Anyone who's partnered with them, um, you get your work done and you have fun doing it. Just the two things that you like the most. David Murphy. David's last day is tomorrow. And I, I told him at the table, I think I got him dead to rights. I think I finally figured him out. And he was a little nervous about that because I just might give him a zinger or two. David, in my years working with you, I've known you to be extremely professional and capable. With that, you've stayed on the road of continuous improvement. You're quick to take responsibility for your actions, to learn from your mistakes, and to go forward better equipped to deliver good results. I see good things ahead for you. We wish you the best in your new endeavor. I want to make sure to say, David, they're having an open house for David tomorrow in the training room at City Hall from 1 to 4, 2 to 4. 
two to four. Anyone who wants to wish him well in his next phase of life, yeah, I have it right here, two to four in the training room at City Hall. So, as we wrap things up, Megan, it's ahead of one o'clock. Under the heading of Life Connected, I can't help but touch on the political divide that does exist in our country. You can say I'm treading out on thin ice, maybe I am. I invite each one of us to be instrumental in pulling together as a nation, pull together as a region, pull together any which way, because that's how we do the most good together. I honestly believe that it will take a sort of revival for this to happen, returning to the fundamental truths that our country was founded on. Let's bring back things like humility, things like selflessness, service, helpfulness, hard, smart work, respect, dignity, fidelity, valor, <clears throat> patriotism. Let's dedicate ourselves to seeing the good in people with whom we disagree on one subject or another. As we consider the great success of this region, everyone in this room is part of making that happen. Thank you. Today, we've taken a look at some of our vital linkages that make life connected here pretty sweet. So with gratitude to our sponsors, to all of you in attendance, to everyone who made this event possible, thank you.